And welcome back to In the Cage with Bards here on NextSportsStar.com. And joining us now, as they do every week, to talk about last night's episode of The Ultimate Fighter Season 18, it's He Said, She Said with Louis Fassett and Sarah Cheesecake Morris. How you doing, guys? I'm good, I'm good. Glad to hear it. Sarah, how you doing today? Yeah, I'm not too bad. How about you? I'm doing very well, and thank you so much for asking. Nobody asks. But uh, Sarah, uh, unfortunately, we saw you fight last night. Not unfortunately to see a fight. We love watching you fight, but we don't like watching you lose. And unfortunately, that's what happened last night to Juliana Pena. Uh, did it sting at all having to watch it all over again? Um, yeah, it's pretty shitty watching it all over again. <laughs> uh, what were your emotions uh, when you were watching it? Were you picking apart your performance? So what, what was going through your mind? Um, honestly, my head wasn't in that fight at all. So it's... It's not really who I am as a fighter, so I, it's not like I was picking apart my performance because I thought everything was terrible that I did. Louis, what were you thinking when you were watching Sarah fight Juliana? Yeah, like I, I don't think that was the Sarah that you know that we we had seen in the past, definitely. And I think you know you can't judge you can't huh? judge you know a fighter on on one performance. You know, in that huh? house especially, it's, it's tough to perform. To the right, so someone's standard, uh. So I don't think there we go. I don't think one. I don't think one performance really defines you as a fighter at all. All right, uh, a little bit of a phone uh, wonk there, but yeah, it was unfortunate uh, watching that. Uh, Sarah, you did seem to come out a little bit flat. Uh, Juliana was able to smother you uh, for the most part uh, until the end of the fight. There, uh, why did you come out flat? Was it just something? Was it an adrenaline dump? But what exactly happened there? Um. There were some issues with my warm-up. There was some stuff going on in the warm-up room that, um, I don't know, I would rather not talk about. Just, it, you know, I'm, I'm not one for making excuses. All right, but uh, what, was it a personnel problem? Was it a problem with the coaches? What happened? Um, it's, it's sort of hard to talk at this point just because they've switched around a lot of stuff. So I can't really say at this point. Okay. Well, we did see your emotions boil over in the sauna room. Uh, you know, everyone has uh, their emotional moment on the, this season of The Ultimate Fighter, it seems like. But what was the breaking point for you? What was it that just kind of pushed you over that edge? Um, honestly, the biggest problem I was having was to do with the warm-up for my fight with Peggy. And I was scared that I'd have a warm-up similar to that one going into my next fight, and I didn't want that to happen. So that was my biggest issue, although I did have problems with Juliana as well. I see. And, uh, Louie, what was it like uh, in the gym? These uh, women had to train on separate sides and everything. Was there any additional tension in the gym? Um, not really. I think the coaches did a decent job at, at kind of separating them. And, you know, Sarah had her team kind of thing, and Juliana had her team. Um, but, I mean, it, you know, it's, a, it's an awkward situation. You have people who are fighting each other and, I mean, I think a good portion of people normally would just kind of say, you know, this is business and not keep, not make it a personal thing. But um, I think Juliana, you know, has to make it more of a personal fight and has to not necessarily dislike your, her opponent, but, you know, doesn't want to mix in with them at all. So I think that made it a little bit tougher maybe on the rest of the team and even probably on the coaches. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, you and uh, Misha appeared to hug it out there and appeared to have some sort of resolution. Uh, did you feel that she was sincere in wanting it to resolve the issues that were plaguing the team at this point? Um, I'm not really sure. It's, it's sort of different in that house. You're sort of not around people that you're normally around, not in environments that you're normally in. So I tend to like look back on the whole situation and to feel like I was sort of brainwashed a lot of the time but um yeah I mean it is what it is Louis what about you uh, I was surprised anyway just to, to watch the episode unfold and uh see what Misha said to Juliana later in uh, her room uh Misha seemed to be complaining about uh, the team herself I was actually just gonna bring that up um <laughs> it's, it's funny seeing that now because um, I mean, obviously she was playing Juliana's side a little bit and telling her what she wanted to hear, uh, but I'm almost positive a few times she told us the same kind of spiel, saying, you know, oh, you know, I didn't realize it, but it is true, you know, we are kind of not necessarily playing favorites, but, you know, giving preference to Juliana because she is a squeaky wheel who gets the grease, you know, so um, it's funny because, you know, she told us one thing and then now we see back that she was telling Juliana something different, you know, so 
Um, I don't really know where Misha's head was at. Um, you know, yeah, I don't even know where it is at now, really, because she told us one thing and told Juliana the exact opposite. So, uh, kind of tough to see. And that seems to be Ronda Rossi's main complaint with Misha Tate is that uh, she's two-faced. We've heard her say that a couple of times this season. Uh, is Misha kind of, uh, I don't know, playing at least on TV that kind of character, Sarah? <laughs> um, yeah, it certainly appears that way. Like Louie said, she definitely told us different stuff than she was telling Juliana. And, yeah, it was kind of funny to listen to and stuff. And also... Juliana and Chris had their fights right away, right? So they had more time in between each fight. So they were ready to prepare and they had their recovery time, whereas the rest of us, like, win or lose, you know, we fought later on in the show and we're trying to recover from our fights and get prepared for the next one for the ones that had fights still, you know? So it was sort of a different circumstance. And when you're fighting and you don't know when you're fighting, it's, it's a lot different than when you fought right away and you know that you're not fighting until the last day or the second last day. Mm -hmm. And Juliana seemed to be complaining about a lack of attention from Misha as well, which I thought was kind of different, just uh, given uh, at least what we had seen on TV this far. And uh, she said some other interesting things in the episode that people are mean to her because, uh, oh, if uh, you know, if she says if someone sees that the, their girlfriend sees that I'm, I'm nice to you, she's going to be mad. That's why they're mean to me. I was just watching her going, I've never seen anyone so uh, with such lack of social awareness. Uh, Louis, how does that shake out to you? Because uh, how do you reconcile what is being presented on screen with what Juliana thinks is going on inside her head? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll quote some people on Twitter. They told me that she has got some screws loose, that she's delusional. Um, you know, and I think probably deep down inside, in different situations, she may be a nice person. You know, she may get along with people. But uh, like I, I said it before and I'll say it again, I don't think 14 people can be wrong about the one person, you know. So uh, they actually put up a clip on YouTube last night about me and her getting in an argument. And they kind of cut and pasted it exactly how they wanted it to seem. So I look like the ass. But, um, you know, it doesn't make sense that she thought that, you know, everybody else in the house was out to get her and, you know, didn't like her and were rude to her, but yet 14 other people had the same opinion about her, you know what I mean? So, kind of weird. Yeah, it's like my therapist used to say to me, sometimes it's not everyone else, sometimes it's just you. But, <laughs> Louis, you had uh, the line of the night or the impression of the night with your impression of uh, Juliana hitting pads. Uh, <laughs> that, that was my laugh out loud moment for me there. Uh, is that something that uh, you'd been doing around the house or did that just come to you on the spot? Uh, that actually just kind of came to me on the spot. I mean, that's how she looks when she spars, when she fights, when she hits pads, when she was swimming laps, she looked the same way. So, um, you know, it was a, I kind of got a kick out of it. And I mean, people might think that I was being a rude or I was being an ass, but if you watch her fight, she puts her head down and she comes forward. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, to make fun of her by any means, but that's, you know, if you watch her fight mostly with um, when she fought uh, Shayna, that's exactly what she did, put her head down and started swinging for the fences and it works for her. So, Hats off to her for winning, but it's not the most, it's not the prettiest stand up, that's for sure. No, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing, and that is for sure. And Sarah, I have to ask you this. Roxanne Matafari, one of the most uh, nice people on the show, and at least in the way that she's pre been presented, uh, the happy warrior, the, the stream of relentless positivity. Why did you beat her up like that? <laughs> it was one elbow, and it barely <laughs> even touched her. You saw that, it just grazed her. Did you see that, Shiner? Come on now. Yeah, I think, did you see how hard I hit Peggy? I hit Peggy way harder, and she didn't bruise like that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm just giving you a hard time now. But uh, we also saw Juliana pumping Roxanne for info after the two of you trained together. Is that uh, kind of a sneaky thing to do, or is that just smart strategy on her part, Sarah? Um, I don't think it's that smart, but uh, she was doing that with everyone, and I heard... She was going up to my coaches. She was going up to Eric. I think she might have been going up to Ricky. She was going up to everyone asking them for inside information on what I've been doing in training and what my game plan is. Yeah. Louis, what do you think? Sneaky or smart on Juliana's part? I think it's kind of sneaky. I don't, I don't see it pointed. I mean, if you think about it, they, we, they, at that point, I think they had been training together for five weeks, so you should you know, know what, you're, what the, your teammate does and what they're good at kind of stuff, right? But... Um, it's kind of odd. Uh, I don't think, you know, I don't think it really made any sense because obviously you you know what you've seen them fight before. You train with them. You know what they're going to do, and 
you see them training every day. You, you can, if you really want to find out, go, you know, sneak over there and have a look if it's that important to you. Yeah, that's a very good point as well. And uh, the uh, fashion award goes to Ronda Rousey this week for Rondaizing people's shirts. Sarah, did you sell the Ronda shirt on eBay as you indicated last night? Um, I haven't yet, but I think I might get more a higher bid if I <laughs> do it now. Yeah, there you go. You've already had uh, a plug on Nationwide TV for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Rhonda's fashion sense and uh, her uh, avant-garde line of clothing, it seems? Um, it's pretty sweet because it's more for shirts that are too big or too small to make them sort of fit you properly. Uh, being a woman in the sport, you mostly, when you get sponsors and different people, they mostly give you guy shirts that don't really fit you well, so it's it's sort of a nice change, you know, like make them fit you. Louie, any jealousy on your part that you do not get a Ronda Eyes shirt? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, the, the one part I wish they would have shown is we actually ronda Josh's jersey. Um, his, uh, <laughs> I ended up ripping up the back of his shirt accidentally with the iron he wanted me to iron his shirt for him and uh <laughs> so he had a big hole in it and i was like don't worry josh i'll fix it for you so i just cut a bunch of slits in the back of his shirt and run a fighter for him <laughs> there you go that is awesome and it probably serves him right for asking you to iron his shirt right yeah it's a long i think we offered to iron his shirt actually <laughs> that's the truth <laughs> I, I can't deny that because the, the, we had like little patches on the back and they were iron on so it was falling off and i was like hey man i did mine just like a couple of days ago do you want me to do yours like oh whatever sure uh, and then I guess I turned the iron too hot and instantly stuck to it and tore a big big hole in it. So he was pissed, but I fixed it for him. <laughs> well, there you go. So Josh has a Rondaized uh, item of clothing he can sell on eBay now, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, great talking to you two today. Always a pleasure. Uh, looking forward as we uh, wind things up here on uh, the Ultimate Fighter Season 18. And uh, you don't have to tell me who it's against, but uh, I do want to know, have you guys been approached at fighting on finale night? Louis? I don't think I'm really allowed to discuss that information. All right, yeah, you're under lock and key. I'm, I'm not asking for specifics, but, uh, you know, it, it, are the lines of communication open, Sarah? Um, yeah, like Louis said, we're not really allowed to talk about anything. So, yeah, you'll have to wait and find out. That's a yes. Come on, that's a yes. Anyway, <laughs> all right, great talking to you guys. Sarah, just remind people where they can find you uh, in the social media universe and uh, where they can buy your shirt. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Sarah Cheesecake. Uh, like my fan page on Facebook, the Sarah Cheesecake Morris. Buy my shirts at fightforsomething.ca. And um, right now on MMACanada.net, I believe, they have vote for your favorite female fighter, so vote for me. Canadian female fighter. Sorry. There you go. That's a solid vote in my book. Louis, where are you in the social media universe and uh, any other uh, projects you got going on? Uh, feel free to plug away. Well, you can't vote for me to be the, your favorite female fighter, That's unfortunately. But yeah. um, not yet. Hit me up on, <laughs> not yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, Elf is at MMA. Same thing on Instagram. Um, or add me on Facebook. I, uh, I I accept every every friend request. I'm living proof of that. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. A really a, a great pleasure to talk to you. We'll do it again next week, and we'll be back with more in the cage with Bards on ExportStar.com right after this. Oh, no.